I am Lars Valentin, Professor of Cardiology at Uppsala University Hospital, and I am also head of the Uppsala Clinical Research Center, where we focus on <coughs> doing both registries of real-life healthcare in cardiology and clinical trials. Yeah, I have been involved in the development of Ticagrelor and the clinical program since more than five years. And in the pivotal PLATO trial, I was a co-principal investigator and co-chairman together with Professor Bob Harrington from DCRI in the United States. The commonly used drugs <coughs> for platelet inhibition in addition to aspirin has been the tyanopyridines, and these are clopidogrel and prasugrel. These compounds are prodrugs. They need conversion to become an active metabolite, and this takes some time. And also, they are irreversibly bound to the platelets. So once bound to the receptor, the platelet is irreversibly inhibited and stays so for its whole lifespan. And therefore, it will take five to seven days until the platelets have completely recovered. With clopidogrel also, there is a variation in response because of a variation in the conversion to the active metabolite. So around 20 to 30 percent of patients are low responders to clopidogrel. To presigrel, though, there are almost no non-responders. Ticagrelor is a, quite a new class of <coughs> P2Y12 plated inhibitors. This is a direct acting compound. It does not require any metabolic conversion, and it has a more rapid off onset and even a more rapid offset than clopidogrel. It provides a more complete inhibition, more consistent inhibition of platelets, and the inhibition is directly related to the plasma concentration. So when the treatment is stopped, <coughs> the platelet can be reactivated and go back to it, its active condition, and therefore the inhibition is reversed within around 48 hours. Uh, with Prasugrel, which is the other new alternative <coughs> for tr preventing platelet activation in patients with acute coronary syndrome, with <coughs> Prasugrel in the Triton trial, there was an obvious downside with an increase in major bleeding and even an increase in fatal bleeds. And this occurred despite that Patients going to cabbage surgery were not really included in the trial. Patients were randomized after a coronary angiogram, and those that needed cabbage surgery were excluded. Still, there was even a five-time elevation of the risk of bleeding in patients going to bypass surgery. So obviously, there were downsides with an increased risk of bleeding with Prasugrel. This was especially seen in elderly patients, patients with low body weight, and patients with previous stroke and TIA. With Ticagrelor, we didn't see these side effects. We had no increase in bleeding, although we had a pronounced reduction in ischemic events and an improval in survival. We saw no downside concerning major bleeds. The risk of major bleeds were similar between clopidogrel and <coughs> ticagrelor. And there was, though, a slight increase in spontaneous major bleeds over time with ticagrelor. But if we take all bleeds into consideration, both those at cabbage surgery and the spontaneous bleeds, there was really no difference. The, the largest effect in the PLATO trial, the largest benefit with Ticagrelor versus Clopidogrel, was really a reduction in overall mortality. There was a 22% relative reduction in overall mortality and an absolute 1.4%. We saved 14 lives per 1,000 treated patients with Ticagrelor versus Clopidogrel. And this was the most impressive effect in the trial. And the magnitude of this effect should be remembered. It is even larger if you compare <coughs> t uh, thrombolysis with TPA versus triplokinase. The effect, the benefit in survival is larger with ticagrelor versus clopidogrel. 
it is of the same magnitude as when you compare streptokinase versus placebo for reperfusion in acute MI. It is of the same magnitude if you compare aspirin to placebo. It is really one of the largest mortality benefits that has been seen in the treatment of acute coronary syndrome. And it should be remembered that no previous platelet inhibitor since aspirin has been shown to improve survival. So uh, with clopidogrel, there hasn't been really any convincing improval in survival. So therefore, this is, I think, an even surprising large effect, mainly because of reduction in cardiovascular mortality. Side effects should, of course, be seen in the perspective of uh, the benefits you have with the compound. It, it should then be remembered that beyond the reduction in mortality, there was also a reduction in myocardial infarctions and a reduction in stent thrombosis. So the benefits were pronounced. There were some side effects, and there was a perception from the patients of a shortness of breath in 5% more of <coughs> the ticagular patients than <coughs> the clopidogrel patients. These episodes of dyspnea were <coughs> usually short-lasting, usually less than a week. They were reversible and they were not related to any influence on pulmonary function. They were not related to any influence on cardiac function. And it seems that this shortness of breath is related to the properties of the compound. This compound <coughs> is impairing the reabsorption of adenosine that is ongoing continuously. And this is probably related to an increase in adenosine concentration. And we know that if we inject adenosine into patients, these patients will perceive a shortness of breath that is short-lasting and reversible. So probably this is a side effect that is part of the property of the drug. And it is completely reversible when you stop, and it is more a perception of dyspnea than really an influence on the need of oxygen. Only one patient out of 100 really stopped the treatment because of shortness of breath. So in the majority of cases, this was reversible. And we as investigators now t tend to look upon this more as kind of a phenomenon like cough on ACE inhibition rather than kind of a severe side effect. So this is kind of a disagreeable experience that a few patients might have for a short time, but usually they can get over this. Concerning the uricemia, this is of course nothing that the patients experienced. There was around a 5% increase in mean concentration of uric acid with ticagrelor versus clopidogrel. This was only a laboratory finding. There were no differences in gout or gaudiatritis, and these are the only phenomena related to uric acid increase. There is a uric acid increase with other compounds like diuretics, like beta blockers, and it doesn't really affect the patients in any way. It was completely reversible when you stop the treatment, and as you know, these kinds of treatment is needed for around one year after an acute coronary syndrome, so therefore Oh, we don't see this as kind of a real problem to the patient care. Yeah, we see this drug <clears throat> as being used in routine care as early as possible after admission to hospital for an acute coronary syndrome. It can be used in all cameras. We tested it in all cameras, ST elevation AMI and non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, and it should be started as early as po possible. And you see a continuous benefit over time. During the whole year of treatment, you see a continuous benefit. And the benefits appear slowly, both in the reduction of myocardial infarction and in mortality. So therefore, we see this really as the pre preferred alternative treatment to clopidogrel, both in the acute stage and for long-term use. So this is not a specific drug for the cath lab. This is really a drug for early start and long-term prevention of new events in all cameras with acute coronary syndromes.